Hey, what's up everyone? Today I want to continue breaking down the War Table stream by discussing gear. Quite a bit of gear was shown during the War Table stream, but it went by so quickly that we couldn't get a good sense of what was going on. So I'm going to slow it all down and do my best to describe the gear in the game, as well as the menu and how it all works. I will also refer to the leaked achievements occasionally, since they give some insight into gear and leveling, but I won't be discussing any story spoilers. But if you're totally adverse to hearing about the achievements at all, I wanted to warn you ahead of time. But without further ado, let's get started. And I think the best place to start is with beginner gear. This screen is pretty much what things will look like when we first start the game. Since it's such a basic look at the gear menu, I think this will be a good screen to explore the menu before we get into more advanced gear. So let's start at the top left. This is your customizable hero card. The background is called a nameplate. We'll see more examples of these as we go through the video, and it looks like there are a ton of them, so there should be plenty to choose from. At the top left is your username, and at the top right is a star rating alongside a hero emblem, in this case Iron Man. The hero emblem could either reference your selected hero, favorite hero, or highest level hero. It looks like we can also customize the hero card's layout, because we'll later see the hero emblem in the bottom left corner. Below the hero emblem is your power level. Based on the leaked achievements, you will be able to at least reach power level 300. Then to the left is what I believe to be the hero level. The leaked achievements award you for reaching hero level 5 with 5 different heroes, and then again when you reach hero level 50 and purchase all skills for any hero. Outside of the hero card we can see our different stats. These numbers will be enhanced depending on the different gear we equip. We'll look at this section more as we go through the trailer as well. At the top right is what I believe to be different currencies for the game. This symbol stands for credits, and by pre-ordering the exclusive digital edition in the PlayStation Store, you get 1,000 credits. The assumption right now is that these credits will be the ones that act as actual money that you will use to buy outfits. That has not been confirmed, but that's the general consensus right now. How far 1,000 credits will get you remains to be seen as well. The currency on the right is more of a mystery, but the guess is that this will be in-game currency that you can acquire by playing the game. You might be able to acquire both through gameplay we really don't know, but hopefully we'll hear more on the different currencies before too long. At the bottom left of the screen are different resource fragments. These will be used to upgrade your gear. In the game overview trailer, we could see some examples of these, but none of them are very exciting. You might have expected something like vibranium or adamantium, but it's actually stuff like reagent and catalyst, or at least that's what we've seen so far. So I won't be diving deep into different resource fragments, just because they don't seem very insightful, but we will discuss them more later on in the video. But that brings us to the gear itself. Each character has four different types of gear which corresponds to the different stats at the top. Melee, range, defense, and heroic. This column here is your equipped gear, and this area to the right is all your collected gear that you don't have equipped yet. This clear, circular reticle is what we use to hub over the gear that we are interested in, and that brings up this box which gives us details on the gear. Since this is beginner gear, it's pretty empty. We'll talk more about it when we see more advanced gear in a moment. Lastly, hidden behind the gear details are artifacts. We still don't know a lot about artifacts, but we do know they will enhance our characters. There are also two different types of artifacts, major and minor. There is one slot dedicated to major artifacts, and two slots for minor artifacts. We can also see that the second minor artifact slot is locked until we reach a certain level. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to determine what this artifact is yet, so if anyone knows what this object is in the image, definitely let us know in the comments. One artifact name has been shown in the trailer though, and that is the Nornstone of Justice. This is the only time we see it and we never get a description, but I would expect to see other types of Nornstones besides this one. Nornstone effects vary in the comics and are usually associated with Loki. Loki was in the prequel comics, but we still don't know if he'll make an appearance in the game. Reddit user Spoonzel theorizes that we might be seeing the effects of the Nornstone of Justice on Black Widow here. The Nornstone image has an orange aura around it, similar to the one around Black Widow. Spoonzel could be onto something, although this aura around Black Widow could be some kind of ability or buff tied to her character, so it's tough to say for sure. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait to learn more about artifacts because they are still largely a mystery within the game. Let's now get back to the gear screen and move on to a more advanced version of Iron Man. Okay, so there's a lot more going on now. We'll start with the gear description. First things first, we get the title right here for the Adept Buff Repulsor. Underneath that we get the rarity, in this case a legendary. 
In an interview with IGN, co-studio head Scott Amos says that there is gear beyond Legendary. Here's the quote. Gear comes in all kinds of rarities, from common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, and even beyond. The higher the rarity in the gear, the better the perks. Perks are the secret to gear. Perks give you certain abilities on top of your normal player skills, and abilities that can do things like buffs for your team. So the yellow hue within this gear card is associated with legendary gear. We can see gear is color-coded as a quick reference in the menu as well. Next we see the gear power level, which in this case is 17. We can upgrade gear power by using those resource fragments we discussed earlier. Next is an example of leveling gear. By the way, they chose to do this on the blurred out gear card, so it's kind of tough to see, but watch the gear power change from 15 to 16. Also, only two things changed during this upgrade. One was the gear power level, and the other was the ranged rating, since this is ranged gear. The same piece of gear gets upgraded again, but now it also improves the resilience rating from 7 to 8. So it looks like different aspects of gear get leveled at certain intervals in the upgrading process. We never see the perk stats increase, but it's possible those will increase during certain levels as well. Speaking of resilience, there are different attributes on gear besides resilience, for example, resolve, precision, and proficiency, among others. We don't know what each of these do yet, but they add another layer to gear customization. Going back to leveling up gear, there is this section that shows us the next boost level. Underneath it is a bar similar to an XP bar. My guess is that there are a couple ways to upgrade gear. You can either pay using resources like we just saw, or you can level them up naturally by using them in combat, which is what I think this progress bar is indicating. There is also this 2 out of 10 number at the right. My guess is that there is a limit as to how far we can upgrade gear, so a max of 10 times. Just a quick side note, if you saw my previous gear video from the game overview trailer, you might be a little confused about the resource fragments being used on gear, because previously, the resources were used to unlock perks within the gear. It looks like this is another thing that has been updated since then, so I think perks come automatically unlocked when you get the piece of gear, and resources are now only used to increase the stats on the gear. But let's start getting into the perks themselves. Each piece of gear has a star rating, in this case 5 stars which is probably common with legendary gear. We have three perks here and I'll read them before discussing them. We have Adept Buff, 22.3% chance weak point attacks grant a damage buff. Plasma Repulsor, standard repulsor attacks deal plasma damage. Might Impulse, 53.1% increased stun damage from power attacks. In particular I want to point out Plasma Repulsor. A lot of gear in the stream, but not all, has some kind of effect tied to it, in this case plasma. We can quickly tell what effect is tied to gear based on its symbol to the left. Those symbols are at the bottom right for each piece of gear if an effect is tied to it. But we will discuss each effect individually as we run into them throughout the War Table stream. Another interesting thing is that the Adept buff mentions enemy weak points, which I don't believe we've really seen showcased so far. But the last thing I want to point out on this screen are these colored columns next to each piece of equipped gear. Each box refers to the rarity of each piece of unequipped gear in your inventory for that category of gear. In this case, we can see the ranged gear category and the color orders match up. Purple, blue, green, yellow, purple. So I guess the color columns are meant to be a quick visual indicator for us to see gear colors that we might want to investigate, equip, or sell without clicking on each category first. Also, there are 9 slots in the color columns and in the inventory, so maybe 9 is the maximum amount of gear we can hold for each category. But I think that's enough of this screen. Let's move on to some other gear screenshots next. Here we can see Black Widow's starting stats before jumping to a level 16 version of her. We've already read a version of Adept Buff, so here are the other two perk descriptions. Electric ACP rounds. Ranged attacks with full auto shot deal shock damage. Mighty Boon. 25% increased critical hit chance for power attacks. Electric ACP rounds give us our first look at the shock effect on gear, and of course we can see the shock emblem alongside the gear. Next we get a look at base level Thor, before seeing his level 16 version. Before we talk about his gear, I do want to point something out. Even though his outfit changed and there is a blue outline around the hammer, gear does not change the appearance of our characters. The blue outline is just showing that the gear is for Mjolnir's grip, and I want to emphasize that outfits are the only thing that change your look. So I just wanted to make that clear before moving on, just in case you weren't aware. But going back to the gear, here are the descriptions. 
Proficient Protection, 21.5% chance ranged power attacks grant a defense buff, requires ranged power attack ability. Electrified Casing, pinned enemies take shock damage over time. Heavyweight Breaker, 100% increased damage from heavy combo finishers. The main thing I want to point out is an ability requirement within the Proficient Protection perk. This means that gear will sometimes benefit specific abilities instead of just general stats. Let's next move on to the Hulk's melee gear. This perk reads, Gamma Sector. Light combo finishers deal gamma damage, emitting an aggressive burst of gamma radiation. This is the next example of status effects, and this emblem corresponds to gamma damage on attacks. We get to see an example of this on Iron Man's lasers in the stream too. During this clip, the green bar above enemies fills up and inflicts gamma damage. You can also see the gamma emblem above the green bars, as well as the green damage numbers. Going back to the Hulk, I know a lot of people had questions on how gear would work for the Hulk, and it looks like it will be all internal modifications. In this gear example, injecting nanites or microscopic robots into him to boost his power. So yeah, it's all internal for the Hulk, and not related to new pants or something like that. This brings us to more Iron Man gear. There aren't really any new perks here, but there are some things I want to point out. Since this is a piece of gear that isn't equipped yet, we can see what stats are increased and decreased for a piece of gear before equipping it. There are also additional options for handling the gear. We can of course equip it, or we can choose to dismantle it. Doing so will most likely yield resources in exchange for scrapping it. We've seen how to boost gear already, and underneath that is the option to compare gear to make it a little easier to select which gear piece to equip. Iron Man's next piece of gear shows us the PIM Oscillator, which reads, Laser attacks now deal PIM damage, seamlessly blending Stark Tech weapons with PIM technology. We got to see an example of this against one of the AIM mechs, which is named Monotronic Exo. Again, we can see the PIM emblem and red bar indicating that the enemy is taking PIM damage, and of course it results in the enemy shrinking. Thor has a similar perk called Experimental Pin Particle Emitter. Pinned enemies take PIM damage, harnessing Asgardian tech to emit PIM particles. We've seen a couple perks for Thor now being applied to pinning enemies, and in the last video I discussed how some of Thor's abilities remove the ability to pin enemies, so you'll want to make sure your gear perks match your abilities. So the next clip is one we kind of mentioned earlier, where the developers make some of the gear all static keyed to prevent us from reading it. I don't know why they do it, because they show the same piece of gear clearly later, and the gear isn't really all that interesting anyway. The main perk that we couldn't read is Gamma Chamber. Laser attacks deal gamma damage, incorporating Dr. Banner's redacted research on gamma bombs. We've seen this gear in action a couple times now, so let's move on to the next piece of Iron Man gear, which shows us the Cryo status effect, and its corresponding emblem. Cryo Injector. Light combo finishers trigger a burst of cryo damage. We can also get a cryo defense perk somewhere, since we later see this notification during gameplay. Back to Iron Man, we have two more perks to read. Faultless Pulse. 29.7% chance melee critical attacks trigger a stun damage explosion. Aerial Boon. 15% increased critical hit chance for mid-air melee attacks. There is also Lightweight Spark. 13.5% chance a light combo finisher grants a heroic charge burst for all heroic. There's also a very sneaky hidden detail during the static transition here. For only a couple frames we can see Iron Man with a full set of level 100 gear, which is probably the max level gear in the game. Unfortunately, it's so fuzzed out that we can't read any of the details on the screen. The best I can make out is the title, Proficient Buff Repulsors, a perk called Proficient Buff, and the second perk that is gamma related. We can kind of see two minor artifacts to the right, but I can't tell what they are. They kind of look like crystals to me, but I'm interested to hear what you all think they might be. Moving on a bit, we can see Kamala's base stats as well as her level 22 gear. The one I want to call out is Polymorph Support. 32% increased heroic charge rate when Polymorph is active. Since this Polymorph gear increases heroic charges, I don't think Polymorph itself is a heroic ability. Instead, Polymorph could be the name of her intrinsic ability, which is the bar right here. Next we get three more perks tied to Kamala's gear. Aerial Quake, 100% increased stun damage from mid-air melee attacks. Sure Shot Spark, 11.6% chance defeating enemies with melee attacks grants a heroic charge burst for all heroics. Ultimate Heroic Charge, increases charge rate of heroic ultimate ability by 16.2%. 
This piece of gear would be great if your goal was to charge heroics as quickly as possible. We also get to see another new piece of gear, but I really want to call out Rampage Protection because I think it sounds pretty cool. Rapidly defeating 5 enemies grants a defense buff. Also if it wasn't clear before, we can equip gear that is a higher level than our current power level since we are at level 23 power but using level 26 power gear. Okay, now let's talk about vendors in the game. It's been revealed that there are two main factions in the game, the Resistance and the Anthill, where Hank Pym is, and Shield. We first get to see Roy Model G, who I think is part of the Resistance faction. We can briefly read the Gear Vendor tutorial, which is, Gear vendors offer gear of various rarities in exchange for fragments, upgrade modules, and other rare resources. Gear vendors can be found in each outpost and have a selection of goods that rotates weekly. Check back regularly to inspect an ever-changing inventory. On the gear vendor menu, we can see at the bottom there are specialty items, which are different resource fragments used to upgrade gear. It looks like resources will also be used to buy gear from vendors. Some of these specialty items can also be used to buy gear from that same vendor. We can also see a timer for how long it will be before the gear selection is refreshed. The first piece of gear we get to see in this menu is the Nimble Graviton Explosion Vest. Graviton is another status effect in the game, and you can see its associated emblem on the left. The gear perk reads, 19.7% chance perfect evading triggers a Graviton explosion that causes enemies to float in the air. This status effect is interesting for a couple other reasons though. In science, Graviton is a hypothetical particle believed to be used to control gravity. In Marvel Comics, there's an element called Gravitonium that has gravitational properties. With the existence of Graviton gear, it's possible we will come across Gravitonium at some point in the game. Reddit user Spoonzel theorizes that might be what we see behind Hulk in this gameplay clip. Graviton is also the name of a Marvel supervillain, and although this gear isn't necessarily confirming him in the game, I think it does tease the idea that he is more of a plausible possibility now. So we'll have to keep an eye on Graviton, but for now, let's move on. At the top right of each piece of gear we can see the emblems of different heroes, which means that a variety of different hero gear will be sold in vendor shops. The color at the top right of each gear piece also indicates the rarity of that gear. One piece of gear has the hero emblem faded out, which is weird, and that's this piece of level 37 gear. I went back and looked at other heroes gear pieces for a piece that looked like this one, but couldn't find any similarities, so maybe this is a piece of Captain America gear. But before I start speculating too hard, let's look at the remaining pieces of gear that are shown off. We next have Black Widow Gamma Bullets cartridges with the perk Gamma Bullets, critical ranged attacks deal gamma damage, contaminating targets with weaponized gamma radiation. The next piece of gear is the same thing except it does PIM damage instead of gamma. Then for Kamala we have the Reactive Explosion Vest. Reactive Explosion, 13.1% chance taking damage triggers a damage explosion. Then for Hulk we have Faultless Spark Nanites. PIM Infuser, power attacks deal PIM damage injecting PIM particles inside of targets on contact. Next we move on to the Shield Faction vendor, Sidney Gaffer Levine. Sydney is from the comics and he is basically the head of the gadget division in S.H.I.E.L.D. The perks for this first set of gear aren't exactly exciting, so instead I want to focus on some other interesting aspects here. The first is that at this moment in the game, we can't buy a lot of gear here because we don't have a high enough faction level within S.H.I.E.L.D. This piece of gear in particular requires a faction rank of 46, but judging by this number and S.H.I.E.L.D. XP meter, it looks like we are only faction level 2 right now. Some gear is still available though. Different gear requires different faction ranks, so not everything will be locked so deep into faction ranking. I also want to point out another piece of gear with a missing hero emblem, which is right here. To me, this looks even more like Captain America gear. Both pieces of gear are around level 35, so maybe that is around the time we are able to unlock Cap, because there's no way that he's actually dead. The next piece of gear we can see is the Faultless Spark Van Braces for Thor. There are two perks I want to mention here, but the most interesting one is Terrigen Augments. Light combo finishers conjure a Mist of Terrigen. So this is another status effect and the last one that I was able to find within the War Table stream, but it looks like we will be able to weaponize the Terrigen Mist at some point. I don't know what the effects of the Terrigen Mist on enemies will be yet, but I'm very curious to see it in action. The other perk is Odin Force Breaker, increased damage from Odin Force. Like Kamala's Polymorph ability, I think Odin Force is the name of Thor's intrinsic ability. Next is the Heavyweight Blessing Reactor for Iron Man. Critical Inspiration. 
32.3% chance takedowns grant a willpower burst. I'm not quite sure what willpower will do in the game, but it's interesting to see it called out here. I'm assuming it will be another gear stat like resolve and resilience. Then we have berserker buff. Five consecutive hits grants a damage buff. This one just sounds fun to use, and unfortunately, I don't think it's hinting at Wolverine. But that concludes all the different gear that was shown during the stream. After going through all of that, I can tell the gear and leveling systems in the game will be very large and allow for a ton of customization to play around with. Needless to say, I'm extremely excited to get my hands on the game. Speaking of which, the date and time for the next War Table event have been revealed, and that will begin on July 29th at 10am Pacific Time. We also have the beta dates, which are on screen as well. They only occur on the weekends, but August 7th is the beta for PS4 pre-orders, then August 14th is when Xbox and PC pre-order players can join, as well as PS4 users, even if you didn't pre-order. Lastly is August 21st, where anyone can join the beta, whether they pre-ordered or not. So definitely tune in to that July 29th War Table stream for more details on the beta. It has also been announced that a Square Enix members account is required to access the beta, as well as the full game. If you have questions on how to make a Square Enix account and link your console or PC, I have a video walkthrough for that process. I'll have a clickable card for that at the end of this video as well. While we're here, I have another Avengers announcement. It looks like Avengers has teamed up with 5gum. Buying a pack will grant you a code for in-game content, although none of the codes are working right now since the game isn't out. The code rewards and variety have yet to be revealed, so as I learn more about how the codes work and what prizes there are, I'll make a video discussing that and whether it's worth your time. But I think that's it for this video. If you'd like more Avengers content, you can also subscribe to this channel since I primarily cover Avengers, or even just a like is extremely appreciated. For smaller channels like mine, it goes a long way. And if you're looking for other areas to stay up to date on the game and the beta, you can join us on Discord, which is where I personally get all of my updates. The link for Discord is in the description below. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bolts of metal from the skies. It is unbelievably good to see you. A bit dramatic, don't you think? It doesn't matter. He's here now.